We're currently hiking into uh, another cave that we're interested in bolting. We're in uh, Brakes Interstate Park, which is on the southeastern borderline of Kentucky, where Kentucky meets Virginia. We've been here exploring the endless sandstone possibilities and developing climbs, and good to be back in my uh, home state of Virginia. I actually grew up in the coal fields, worked on strip jobs when I was younger to earn money in high school and college. And when the coal economy really started to contract um, and, and, and it really, really got bad in 2010, 2011 because of a multitude of factors, uh, but, but we realized right around that time that we were going to have to diversify our offerings and, and create offerings that would appeal to a, a larger audience. So some of the first things that we did was really to look into venture tourism, such as opening climbing in the park. Uh, we built a zip line. We, we were pursuing adventure tourism as a mechanism just to help us produce the revenue to keep the park open. back to Virginia and finding this crag and really developing with Brad, a local developer here, and Kevin, um, it feels cool to contribute back. Something that I'm often asked is, how do those metal things get there in the wall? And the metal things are called bolts. We're going to show you what exactly goes behind root development and putting the bolts in the wall. I'm Kevin. I'm here to show you how to bolt. The number one thing you want to do is find out what the rules and regulations are for the land. So this is Brakes Interstate Park, so we have to get a permit to bolt here. Step number two is to find your line. There's endless amount of walls, and we look for the line, hang a rope over the top. Unless it's a trad line, then we can just climb it. Step number three, how to place a bolt. First thing you have to do is find a piece of rock that's nice and solid. What you want to do is Bang on it a little bit, make sure it's not hollow. Make sure there's not a big loose flake you're bolting into. Remember to always use eye protection. Sure. Step number four is you wanna clean the hole. Make sure the hole is nice and clean because you don't want any rock dust particles in the hole. Okay. Step number five, what you wanna do is hammer the bolt in. Uh, Make sure the hanger is flush to the rock. And then step number six, you want to tighten the bolt and torque it to the specifications of the bolt. Let's test it out. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to be good. <laughs> Gonna move the uh, bolt, it's a little too far left. So I'm put it right here, it feels solid. Seems to be raining a little bit there.
Nice. All right. How's that? Can you take? Oh, so good. Definitely like best route we've done here yet. Really pumped. We can uh -huh. go, Kavito. <laughs> We just got to my favorite swimming hole at the river. Crew? Yes. Camp breaks. Camp breaks. It's a midday swim break. So excited. It's gonna be freezing. I think we have to just go. I can't, I can't. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. No, no! <laughs> it's so good. Okay, I'm I'm a big believer in the three, two, one. Okay. Three, two, one, go! We made it back from our swimming break and we're gonna go climb some more. It's been powerful to have um, athletes like Sasha involved with our advocacy. You could see all of a sudden an uptick in interest from climbers and even I was getting new questions from folks where the area hadn't blipped on their radar yet and suddenly folks had questions about it. So athletes can help kind of responsibly bring attention to areas and encourage some good sustainable visitation there. Places like this are why it's so important to support organizations like the Access Fund and Central Appalachia Climbers Coalition. We all have public lands in our backyards whether it's a state park, a national forest, or a local county or city park. Check out their websites and find out a way that you can be involved.